Let's take a break from the countdown to check out what's new in horror this week in comic books. Remember, these aren't reviews, just a glimpse of what to expect in the genre of horror the next time you enter the comic shop. Here's what's new in comic book horror, October 5th, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below, share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, October 5th, 2022. Grim Tales of Terror Quarterly, Rise of Cthulhu, number one, is from Zenoscope Entertainment. The story is by Joe Brusha, with art by... hmm, no one listed. I guess no one drew this comic. This 72-page special brings Cthulhu into the Xenoscope universe. What kind of tenderly horrors will this elder god unleash? And more importantly, how will tentacles come into play with the covers adorned with... Give me a boo, boo, give me a B, B, give me a S, S. Go boo! I'm not sure if I want to know. Usher of the Dead. The Evil Men Do, number one, is from Blood Moon Comics. The story is by Keith Rommel, with art by Klaus Schwant. This second series in the Usher of the Dead saga has the spirit guide to the afterlife set his sights on a serial killer. This series continues to have a specter vibe to it, yet there's still no word at this time whether or not Usher will be making an appearance. Leonide the Vampire, Miracle at the Crow's Head, Number one is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by Mike Magnola, with art by Rachel Aragano. Hellboy's Mike Magnola reimagines Bram Stoker's classic, depicting the arrival of a vampire in a small coastal town. This one looks to be pretty kid-friendly, so here's your chance to introduce your youngins to the work of a classic comic book spookmeister. Too bad Magnola isn't drawing this one too, but the art still looks pretty dandy. Revolvers, number one, is from Top Cow Productions. The story is by John Zur Platten, with art by Christian Debari. My buddy Christian Debari is all over the place these days and provides the gritty artwork for his story about an enforcer sent from hell to bring back as many demons as he can with his twin six-shooters. Sounds like Justified meets Brimstone and me likey. Garbage Pail Kids Origins, number one, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Hans Rodianoff, Adam F. Goldberg, Jeff Zabata, with art by Jeff Zabata. I was a weird kid. When I wasn't watching horror films and reading comics, I was gazing at my Garbage Pail Kids cards collection and wondering who these strange kids were and how they became the depraved monstrosities that they became. And how they became these depraved monstrosities. So it looks like this is the comic for me, as this new series takes those cards and gives them a little backstory. Can't wait to find out the secret origin of Adam Baum in this first issue, written by the producer and lead writer of the Goldbergs TV series. Miscreant, number zero, is from Fluke Publishing. The story and art are by Eric Williamson and XNOEED, a.k.a. James B. Blunt. This one looks freaking cool. I love Outsider and genuinely indie comics, and this one seems to fit the bill nicely. It's a $2 anthology comic with seven surreal and terrifying short stories in it. That cover is damn awesome, and I'm going to make sure to pick this one up. Find out how to order a copy for yourself from their website down below before the comments section. The Walking Dead Deluxe, number 48, is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Robert Kirkman, with art by Charlie Adlard. In this issue, the prison saga comes to an end as the governor and his menacing forces battle to the death with Rick and the rest of the survivors. Spoiler alert, no one, not everyone, survives. You might have read this comic before during its original run, but this time it's in full bloody color. Sweetie Candy Vigilante number 1 is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Suzanne Caffiero with art by Jeff Zorno. So, 
This issue features the debut of Sweetie, the candy vigilante, who is the demented daughter of the original Candyman. No, not the guy in the fur coat and the hook for the hand, but the one Sammy Davis Jr. sung about. This is supposed to be a horror comic, so that's cool, but I'm not really familiar with that version of the Candyman. Either way, she appears to be nuts. She also appears to have legs for days and boobs that don't flatten out when she lies on her back. This being dynamite, there's bound to be some on most of those covers. Something Juicy, number one, is from Scout Comics. The story and art are by John Clark. I'm seeking this one out on the title alone. I love the gross places my mind goes, and that unsettling art on the cover doesn't help. I know nothing about this book and kind of want to go blind in and be surprised what this bizarre little title has in store for me. Just check out that gruesome cover. Yeek. Dark Ride, number one, is from Skybound Entertainment. The story is by Joshua Williamson, with art by André Bresson. I'm not in love with the cartoony cover art for this one, but I'm willing to give it a shot, especially with Joshua Williamson writing, as I love his runs on Robin and Deathstroke. I'm looking forward to what kind of horror he has in store for us with this story about a haunted theme park and a kid's first day on the job. Shock Shop number two is from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by Colin Bunn, with art by Leela Lays and Danny Luckert. I quite like the first issue of this horror anthology flip book, telling a pair of terrifying tales. The first story follows a group of campers tormented by a monster in the woods, and the other is about a single dad trying to take care of his kids, but getting in the way of a couple of vengeful spirits haunting his new home. Some nice spooky reading is going on in this book. King Spawn, number 15, is from Image Comics. The story is by Sean Lewis, with art by Thomas Nechelik. What's worse than hell? Well, that's where those conspiring against the new King Spawn are planning on sending him. It's Game of Thrones Spawny style, with chains and capes in this hit new-ish series. Finally, we have Night of the Ghoul, number one, from Dark Horse Comics. The story is by Scott Snyder, with art by Francesco Francavilla. I'm very interested in this new comic from Scott Snyder. It's about a legendary lost movie called Night of the Ghoul that is found by a film restoration expert. But the monster in the film turns out to be real and doesn't want the film to be released. Sounds like a whole lot of meta fun, and I'm definitely all in for this one. That's it for this week's haul. I'll be picking up a bunch of these titles, including Miscreant, Night of the Ghoul, Dark Ride, Shock Shop, Something Juicy, Revolver, and probably Garbage Pail Kids Origins, just for the hell of it. That's a heck of a lot of books. How's about you? Let me know which ones you like down in the comments. Stuck inside your